Hello again, wherever you're watching around the world, this is Mr. Maximo, Vinny Sandu for the European Cricket Network with a match preview for match six of the European Cricket Series, Dresden. It's the first of five T10 matches on Tuesday, the 11th of August from Osterpark in Dresden in Eastern Germany. This game will start at 7 a.m. GMT, which is nine o'clock in Central Europe. It's 12.30 p.m. in India. And as always, you can catch all the action here on the European Cricket Network, whether it's through our website, www.ecn.cricket, or our YouTube channel ECN European Cricket Network and of course if you are in or around the Indian subcontinent you can catch it on fan code and if you don't already why don't you follow us on social media because there's so much happening in the world of European cricket so follow us at European Cricket or you can follow me Mr Maximo and of course if you're enjoying these match preview videos make sure that you like and leave a comment I get back to as many as I can sorry if I don't get back to all of you but I do appreciate you watching and we do appreciate your support our video yesterday was the most watched video we've ever done in all of our 68 episodes on YouTube. This is episode number 69. So we do appreciate your support and it's good that I'm getting more right than wrong. Hopefully it stays that way. Let's get to what we can expect from Dresden on Tuesday the 11th of August. We have five T10 matches again. You can see it's a five team format. Each team will play each other twice. So they play eight preliminary matches. The top four teams will make it through to finals Friday and each of those four teams will only be two games away from the title. So it's going to be a very interesting week for sure. We're going to see a couple of new teams over the next couple of days, including BSC Reberger. They will make the debut on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, the 12th, we'll get our first look at BSV Britannia. So they're going to bring a lot to the tournament. I'm looking forward to seeing them. Just a reminder, for full fixtures, stats, and scorecards, you can visit our website, ecn.cricket. I've even put the link for the player and team stats in the description of this video. So if you'd like a little bit more information than I can give you in the video, all you have to do is follow the link in the description. It'll take you to the page where we give you all the background info on these players. And I've certainly enjoyed getting to know a little bit more about them as the week's gone on. Let's go then to match six, the first game of Tuesday between RC Dresden and the Eagles. And I do have some likely lineups for you with RC Dresden to be led by their captain, the King, Saeed Waka Hussein. And they'll have Wakas Khalil back behind the stumps, I think, on Tuesday morning. I do think he's come up and should be available for selection. For the Berlin Eagles, they'll be led by their all-rounder, Khalid Zaman, with Jamila Bandara behind the stumps for them. So let's talk a little bit about these two teams. They couldn't have had more different experiences on their first day of European Cricket Series action, starting with RC Dresden. They won all of their three matches on day one, including their initial contest against the Eagles in match three, where they chased down the Eagles' score of 80 with 13 balls to spare. Now, this is their only game on Tuesday, so they'll be very keen to win it. And RC Dresden won all their three games chasing, so we haven't actually seen them bat first, so we're not sure what kind of a score they might be able to post in their 10 overs. We didn't see a team score 100 or more on the first day of ECS Dresden, which is quite unusual for a European cricket series. The Berlin Eagles lost all of their three matches on Monday and they just weren't batting well enough to post a winning score. I felt like their batting depth was lacking a little bit, but the good news is they still have five qualifying games left, so there's plenty of opportunities for them to improve. And we could still see the Berlin Eagles feature on finals Friday, but they do have another three matches on Tuesday. So by the end of Tuesday, they will have played six of their eight preliminary matches. So it really is time for them to put up or pack up as they say in the classics. Let's get to Mr. Maximo's 11 to watch and hopefully you find this information useful. For RC Dresden, I've super highlighted a couple of players for them and the first one I have super highlighted is the man they call the king, Saeed Waka Hussein. Now they do call him the king and he did look dangerous with the bat and the ball on day one. I think he could go large in their only game on day two, but I would like to see him bat a little bit further up the order because I do want to see what he can do. I think he can be quite explosive with the bat, but to be honest, they haven't really needed him to do do too much yet, but I'm sure they'll need him more and more as the week goes on. 
I've also super highlighted a bowling option there in Rahul Grover. And I had to super highlight him because he only bowled 12 balls on the first day of action and five of them were wickets. So that is an incredible strike rate. Let's see if he can keep it up on day two. I've got some other players highlighted there for RC Dress, including their keeper, Wakas Khalil, who I expect to come into the side, as well as Azam Ali Rajput, the left-hand batsman and left-arm orthodox spinner. I've got Vivek Chakanka in there. Now, he kind of anchored their chases on day one. And he did an important role for them at the top of the order, just being quite stable and allowing the others to bat around him. But I would like to see him get a bit more of a move on, especially with the depth of their batting. So he's played a lot of his cricket in Taiwan, which I found a very interesting fact about him. But it will be interesting against the other teams where they do need to score a bit quicker if he's the man to keep that position at the top of the order or whether they perhaps go for a more attacking option. I put an all-rounder there uh, to join Hussein in Sandeep Kambodge, the 10-year club veteran. He was their leading run scorer on the first day with 93 runs at a very, very good strike rate of 172. And how about his early contender for catch of the tournament? A spectacular one-handed effort on the deep square leg boundary. I'm sure that he will remember that for many, many years. He's probably watched it about 100 times overnight, so hopefully he can keep doing the job for RC Dresden on day two. Finally, for R.C. Dresden, I've put a bowling option there in Kapil Chadnani. He bowled very well in their first three matches with a team high of six wickets. For the Berlin Eagles, I've also highlighted some of their players, including their opening batsman, Yunus Ahmedzai. Now, he did look dangerous at times, but he's got a big responsibility to post a competitive score for the Eagles. A lot of that responsibility falls on him. So hopefully he can go on with it a bit more in their remaining matches. Of course, the Eagles have three matches, like I said, on day two. So uh, Yunus Ahmedzai will have to score a pile of runs, I think, if they're going to be competitive. I've also got a couple of all-round options there for the Eagles, including Basha Khan. Now, he picked up six wickets on the first day of the tournament at a very good economy rate of 6.16. He'll definitely have his hands full with this powerful RC Dresden batting lineup, that's for sure. I've got Ruben Davies in there. Now, he was their leading run scorer on day one, despite only playing in two of the three matches. Hopefully, he can score a few more and nudge them towards those competitive kind of totals we've been talking about. And finally, I've put Nasser Hamid in there. He also picked up six wickets for the Eagles on day one, but he was a little bit expensive. I'm sure that he'll look to tighten things up on their Super Tuesday. So here we go again with prediction time. And it was good to get back on a winning run, so I'm feeling it. Uh, and you'd think perhaps this one would be quite an easy one to pick because you've got one team that hasn't uh, lost a game, another team that hasn't won a game. So often these games can be quite dangerous games. They are banana peel games, like my coach used to say, because one team really needs the win. The other doesn't need it so much because RC Dresden are sitting pretty at the top of the table at the moment. But they want to keep building those wins because we do have more teams coming into the tournament over the next couple of days. Before I get to my prediction, though, I've got a couple of notes uh, from yesterday. I got a few comments asking uh, why I put Rajesh Nagaraja as my star player when he was playing for the other team. And the short answer is I often, well, I don't do it very often, but it's possible that I pick a star player that doesn't belong to the team that I've picked to win the game. Because sometimes you have a man of the match that, uh, that, plays for a team that didn't win. Simple as that. Sometimes the winning team has more even performances, whereas the team that didn't win has a standout performance. So he wasn't a bad pick as a star player on that game for USG Chemnitz. Uh, he did score 25 from memory, and he was the second top scorer in the game. So that's why from time to time, you will see a star player that doesn't belong to the team, which I've predicted. It's not something that happens very often, but sometimes I've just got a feeling. And yeah, there, there weren't too many standout performances in that match one of the tournament. Uh, the other point I've got after looking at day one was I thought the boundaries were slightly unusual for an ECS. Now, there were some short boundaries, but they were quite straight, whereas the square boundaries, I think, were about 10 metres longer. So what I noticed is the boundaries seemed quite uh, quite big because a lot of the players kept kind of hitting across the line. And there's this tendency to do that in the short format because you get rushes of blood. And you just feel like you have to just swing everything in your natural arc and, and hope to get hold of a couple. And look, and it can happen, but I'd like to see the players going a bit straighter and getting value for their shots down the ground. So that's something which I hope comes into the tournament over the next couple of days. So it certainly will be very interesting to watch what transpires in Eastern Germany over the rest of the week. And I'm looking forward to meeting these 
couple of new teams coming in over the next two days. But for now, let's get to my prediction. And although it is a banana peel game, I still have picked RC Dresden to win. And I put the king, Saeed Waka Hussein, to be the star player. We hope that you enjoy all the action here on the European Cricket Network. Make sure you jump into the YouTube chat if you get a chance. But for now, this is Vinny Sandu for European Cricket saying enjoy the game and we'll see you tomorrow on European Cricket.